Good morning. Good morning. How are you, Allison? You know, I'm just fine. How are you? <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. Good. How so, has been this? Oh, well, I was going to ask how it's been this week with the library open, but well, you don't know. know. You've been in the well, back. I'll how it's been. <laughs> now I have to use my key to get in the break room because we have the break room door closed. <laughs> <laughs> Before we had everything open, we always had the lights off, not in not in tech services. We always had the lights off out front because it just, you know, and so everything is uh, brighter. But because it's been it's been a little slower this week than the last time. Did you just get our three, two, one again? I did get the three, two, one again. Did we not go live before? No, I have our timer that we've been live for 50 seconds. Huh. You know what? We'll just. <laughs> We'll just keep going. It, right. we're open. it was. It hasn't been that busy this week, so I haven't even really seen that many people. Like I, I told you the last time when we reopened, it was nice to walk out and be like, "Oh, you know." And I don't, I don't work out there, but I see like our regular computer yeah. users. You know, there they are at their computer. There they are at the study table. You know, and truthfully, we haven't had um, nearly that many people yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Wits, it's been much slower this time. We, we had yeah. opened those three days in July, and it was really busy then. Hi, Mary. You're uh, here. Maybe we weren't here initially. I don't know. We do the best we can every week. <laughs> new, new technical difficulties every, every time we do know, That's the thing. I try not to make the same mistake over and over again, but we don't have <laughs> mistakes to make every single week. Oh, you got to love technology. <laughs> People have been really good about wearing their masks. There's been lots of masks, so that, that's been good. Um, I think that was the thing that made me most uncomfortable in July when we opened. Although the majority of people were wearing them in July. Yeah. But now everyone's wearing them, and that's just, it's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think people are glad that we're open, but um, they're being cautious. People are being more cautious now, it seems like, than they were. Yeah. Before. Hi, Andrea. <laughs> and uh, we also, opening this week, we're opening the week that a lot of schools are reopening or reopening or half, re whatever their version is. Um, right. So in the middle of July or the beginning of July, it was still summertime. And it, I think people are probably now in a different mode. So that might be why we were like, busy this week, too. Um, Morning, Melanie. Do school at home or try to get their kids to school with a whole different. Yes different world there and uh so i think we're all in a different mindset september than we were in july yeah <clears throat> no you were always here no technical difficulties right okay did you, did you see the three two one countdown on the screen that's a good question yeah did you guys see that because we get this countdown right before we go live so we can make sure we're not you know doing something we shouldn't be doing on camera yeah. <laughs> oh, <thank goodness. laughs> um and so we got it again, like 50 seconds in, which was weird. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Go figure. Can I tell you about a book I read this week? Absolutely. Or last week, I guess. I read it Sunday morning. It was my, it was a one, basically a one sitting book because it was compelling. Um, it was a horror novel, which is definitely not my typical fare. Realized, yeah. Yeah. I don't like reading. I don't like being scared. And I get scared very easily. So therefore, it's not really my... But the thing is, is I really appreciate, almost like with a mystery or something, I appreciate reading a book where I can like, not like where it looks like a lot of effort and a lot of work and they're having a hard time, but I like reading a book where I can see the way that they're like building, you know, mm -hmm. in a mystery where you're like, oh man, like what comes next? Oh, they've really tricked me here or whatever. I kind of like reading it and being like, you're building, I'm definitely afraid right now and it's yeah um and this one wasn't it wasn't scary it was kind of like a zombie vampire-ish situation so okay. it wasn't scary in like I was afraid something was going to happen to me personally which makes a big difference um <laughs> it was called now I didn't write down the author so I'm embarrassed it was called The Return and mm -hmm. the cover is pink and there's a chair on it and um basically there's it's like these four friends and um in the very beginning one of the four friends disappears she's been hiking she's gone missing and so the four friends spend a couple i mean this all happens like one chapter spend a couple years you know coping with the fact that she disappeared but the friend who's telling the story she's like i just knew she wasn't gone i knew she wasn't gone i refused to believe it um and one day the friend just shows up again she returns and um but she's not the same she's not 
it seems the same, but also they decide to go on this trip together and it becomes clear that she is not the same. And so there's like this creepy vibe about how she's different. And then um, I'm not giving too much away even from the back and stuff to say that it's, you know, something about her has changed and, you know, it kind of goes down the vampire zombie style route. It's not traditional in any one of those things, but you know, she's, she's been changed. And um, so I just, I started reading it and it was just, it was so easy to read, you know, and so, yeah. so if you do, I, I'm sorry, I forget the author, but it's called The Return. And the other thing I liked about it was the group of friends. I feel like I could read a book about them even without the horror thing. Like they, they, they were characters in their own right. So it wasn't kind of just a stock thing to tell the story. Andrea uh, is helping you out there. Rachel Harrison, does that sound right? Yes, that would be the author. Thank you. Thank yes. you Andrea. <laughs> Thank you. So it was. I would say that it was certainly a you know a horror novel, but um, it wasn't. It wasn't like extremely disturbing or upsetting. I was able to read it. So. <laughs> well, since you're talking about vampire books, I'm going to tell you, I haven't read this book, um, but I bought it for the library. Yeah. Because of the title. I know what book you brought. Amish Vampires in Space. I mean, <clears throat> it just, <laughs> Jebediah. <laughs> the, <laughs> if you're talking about vampires, I think this is a very interesting route to take. I mean, look at her. She's got her bonnet on and blood dripping out of her mouth. I mean, it just like, Amish Vampires in Space by <laughs> Corey Neitz, N-I-E-T-Z. Um, <laughs> I, I, it just, it looks absolutely ridiculous, but yes. I do not love that title, Amish Vampires Have you read it or have not? I'm sorry. I have not, no. Uh -huh. maybe, one, maybe one of us should. Um, I mean, I can see why it had to be ordered, and I bet it circulated plenty of times. I'm sure it was yeah. a valuable purchase. It circulated. The Amish yeah. world of Alabaster calls upon an ancient promise to escape destruct destruction, then end up on a cargo ship bound for the stars. But they are not the only cargo on board. Some of it is alive, or used to be. <laughs> yeah, it would be, even if some of it were alive, even if you ended there, but now you've added a whole other layer. <laughs> Right. I just, I, I will admit there are times, um, yes, Melanie's saying we had a whole conversation about this book <laughs> and Liz wants everyone to read it. We're going to have a lot of the librarians book club and our inaugural pick is um, Vampires in Space. In space. <gasps> Lattes with librarians book club. <laughs> I invite everyone. I, no one is required, but you are welcome to. <laughs> it's just one of those books that just looks so absolutely fabulous. <laughs> is it available digitally? You know, I'm guessing there's a fair chance it is, but I don't. I would guess. Yeah, and I bet it's a quick read. <laughs> it's thick, but it looks like it'd be quick. But I bet it goes quick, quickly. Are there oh any books God. that you ever like pick up just for their title or just for their cover or anything like that? You know, I can't think of a good example for that, but definitely the cover certainly is going to catch your, mm -hmm. it's going to be a factor, yeah. you know, but um, one thing we talk about with covers and I, I don't have an example here, but in technical services, um, sometimes we'll look at the covers, especially of paperbacks and no judgment here, but like more cheaply printed paperbacks. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll look and they're, they have to use like stock images to make their covers sometimes, you, you know, or they're pulling from some kind of database that they've paid for perhaps. But um, some of my coworker, she has pointed out before where like there's a family walking, but it's definitely two different groups that have been pulled because like the adults are in like sweaters and hoodies and long sleeves and the kids are in like shorts and flip flops or something you know and then it's like a fall lined trail or it's not like it's so incongruous but because we look at the, you know we've got them in front of us we look at them a lot she's yeah. like these they're not dressed for the same outing here and so you think they must have been pulled from two different files <laughs> i i have run across um where i've read different books with the same cover image um like a lot of those romances, like I read a lot of really 
cheesy, corny romances. I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm going to admit it. And um, <clears throat> they pull from the same stock photos. And it will be, they'll like change the lighting. So, but it's like the same image with different lighting and different, you know, different font for the title. But oh my it's gosh. very clearly the very same image. It's I mean, you're very well read in your genre. If that's if you've seen the <laughs> cover images, yeah. I'm impressed. Yeah, cheesy romances. I got them. That is really that's wonderful. Um, I let's see. Do you would you have just anything else? I have some. I did bring some other things. Um, I. I, I brought some because like I like the title or I like oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I okay I have one like that then okay. and then and then you'll um this one I brought because I at this point we've get, gotten to know our audience and I felt like this would play well. Um there's a book called Rage Baking. Um, <laughs> the transformative power of flower, fury, and women's voices. And um it I does have that book just for that title. <laughs> See, there you go. Um, and it, it is actually, um, it has some, it has recipes in it, but it's also then like essays, essays about feminism. Um, it is interviews. It is, um, this, this interview is called Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Mad Men and a Grist Mill. So I don't I couldn't even begin, um, but it does have recipes in it as well. But I do think that it is probably a really engaging book and worth sitting down and looking at. Um, there's a recipe called Kathy's Mongo Lime Orange Curd in Meringue Nests, parentheses, or don't tell me what to do with my eggs. So <laughs> I love it. So anyway, rage baking, I feel like it would be, probably be worth a read for a lot of people in this uh, comment thread um, and for lots of different reasons. Yes. And Susan commented on like seeing the same kind of image again and again, thrillers where there's a girl in a red coat running away. Yes. I've seen that. I think we've all read a book with a girl in a red coat running away. Running away. Oh my gosh, Susan, you're so right. That is, yes, I have seen that. That is totally an image that we've That's all funny. seen time and again. I loved this title. I also really like this book. I like this author. Um, chose the wrong guy, gave him the wrong finger. It I've seen that book. It's it's actually pretty good. Uh, it's you know they were a couple before, and then she comes back to town, and of course he's there again. But um, yeah, chose the wrong guy, gave him the wrong finger. Is just I love, I love that title. I love that. That is that's wonderful. She also has a book. Um, when in doubt, add butter. Same author, uh, Beth Harbison, and that's good advice, right? Add butter. Butter makes everything better. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is not a title-based book, um, but when I was looking at the cart, we just got a lot of new nonfiction in this week. So um, this just, I'm feeling like a little off today, a little not like myself. And when I was reading the description of this this morning to like say, like, do I want to talk about this? Um, like I was like, like almost made me cry, which is just, you know, it's called Molly. See that dog there? The subtitle is The True Story of the Amazing Dog Who Rescues Cats. And just like, and this is nonfiction, this is a true story. Um, but basically, there's a longtime police officer um, who left the force to start his own private detective agency, specializing in helping reunite people with their missing pets. And yet, despite his hundreds of successes, there were still heartbreaking cases where Colin couldn't find the missing on his own. He knew he needed a partner. So. He brought in this dog named Molly. And so together they help find specifically cats because they're uniquely skilled at eluding humans by detecting a unique scent signature. And so um, it sounds like it could be a fiction book. It sounds like all they, I mean, there, there are human and a dog solving crimes, which is probably half of the mystery paperback series of cats more often yeah. than dogs. But um, I don't know, it's just very sweet. I, I saw that book title and I was just like oh, oh my god that is so cute I'm like I don't care if no one reads it I'm buying this book it is just too adorable not to get yeah, it, and it's gonna it's it is also gonna circulate well because um people love a good dog story yeah. and this is definitely a heartwarming and it's dogs and cats right it's perfect just everything about that book is perfect 
Yes. So I see we've got a comment. And one of Andrea's favorite book titles is The Regional Office is Under Attack. She loved the title, but did not like the book. It's disappointing when that happens, isn't it? Very. I, I hate that when a very good title is wasted on a very bad book. This was another book that I I, I saw on the shelf and I just I had to pick it up because I loved even more than the title. Um, uh, the, the subtitle, it's, I'll show you the cover. The Sweet Potato Queen's first big ass novel, and then in parentheses, stuff we didn't actually do, but could have and may yet. <laughs> I love that. I mean, the Sweet Potato Queen books, there are a couple of them, I think, and they're 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 funny, but I just things what can you read the things? Can you read the things we didn't do part again? No, we didn't actually do, but could have and may yet. I feel like that that could describe a lot of my conversations right. with people I'm friendly with. It's just a lot of a lot of like, what if, what if, what if speculation? Oh, I should have, I should have, you know. Maybe whole, I'll do that. Right, and whole avenues. Maybe we'll invent that avenue we've avenues. talked about, Allison. <laughs> yes. I'm just. We just need. We just need a good idea, Leah. We actually have a lot of good ideas. I've got we a good idea. Finance are good ideas. We should tell them about the good idea. You tell them. So I've had this idea for, <laughs> this is totally random, for ages. Like we should come up with this adopt a debtor program so that people who have a lot of money can like adopt a debtor and feel like they've done something good. But like it's life changing in like the debtor's life. Like if someone were to be like, you know what? I made a movie. I've got, I just got $12 million. Let me pay off your student loans for you. Life changing. If because a lot of times the amount of money is vast minimum. and immense to one like me, but it's not vast and immense like breaking ground on a building or, you know, like if, if you don't have like millions to donate, but maybe you have thousands to donate. Right. Or like if you're someone who's like, you know what, that single mom needs a new car. Let me, let me buy her a new car. But you're like a bagazillionaire. Like if you've got like, Jeff Bezos money buying a car you make yeah. you make more than that while you're asleep so yeah. you know, that's a different level of wealth but even for people who are just yeah just wealthy <laughs> right I think you know, the to debtor program would be fabulous <laughs> so yeah so any financiers who want to help us get that off the ground slash know how to design an app slash <laughs> Who could just take that off our hands and then also adopt us as debtors? <laughs> yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's the idea Alice and I are working on. We know right, we've been help. waiting on that, and uh, that'd be great. So, on a different note, um, let's see this book. This book, uh, many people may have heard of Elena Ferranti. She has a new book. She That's a pseudonym. No one knows who she actually is. She wrote the My Brilliant Friend Quartet set in Italy about um, two friends growing up. Um, first one being My Brilliant Friend. And so this is her new book that is not part of that quartet. Um, I did read My Brilliant Friend. It took me many months. I was not super engaged with it, but I just felt like I should read it. And so then The Lying Life of Adults is what this is called which um, I don't know. I just like, I put it on hold because I was like, well, I'll try reading that. And it came in and my coworker checked it in. She's like, this is on hold for you. And I was like, well, set it over there and I'll check it out and I'll take it home for three weeks and I'll return it after three <laughs> weeks. I won't read it. So that's what this is here for. If anyone is interested in her, because like I said, she's very enigmatic. No one knows who she is. Not many authors are able to keep their identity secret this day and age, but so far she has, um, you know, that kind of thing. So it's interesting. And her, the right the writing is good. It is a very literary book, but I just I looked at it when it came in. And I was like, "There's no way I'm not reading it." <laughs> so I'm gonna return it. But I thought someone else might be interested. <laughs> I love that. There there are times when I'm just like, "Oh, I really should read this book." I'm really not going to. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like I, I want to. I she interests me, and I and that my brilliant friend. It's not that it wasn't good or that I didn't enjoy it. It was just. It was just hard for me to get through and I just, yeah. it's not going to happen. And I know it's not. So I'll advertise it here and I'm just going to return it today. And then it'll <laughs> So if you want it, it's going back to the library. Because I know I'm not going to keep it. For, I know I'm not going to read it. 
<clears throat> I do that. I, 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 it's, I've got like four different stacks of books in my room where I'm just like, yeah. I, and then I, what do I do? I reread a book I've already read twice. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm rereading the cover that's been used three times on other books. <laughs> no, this is actually um, the vampire, not the vampire, the zombie series that we talked about. Oh, okay. Uh, the yeah, series. Now. Yeah. Uh, Becky and I talked about it. Yeah. Um, I was just like, yeah, I've got to reread that series. So the I'm on the on that again. I'm sorry. Who's the author on that? Mira Grant. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, the Feed series. Yeah. News, no, Feed is the first book. News Flesh series okay. is what it is. Okay, gotcha. Because there is, because I got distracted by that. I don't have it on hand now. Um, I was confused because there's another book called Feed. Yes. By That's MT a team. Anderson, which is yes. a teen book and a totally different thing. But because on the cover it said by the author of Feed, I brought this other book home to talk about. But as it turns out, that I looked it up before we started. Not the same author, so forget it. It's not about that. I was like, well, back when you talked about that, there's a new graphic novel. It's not. Yeah, yeah. I I I have read that book. Actually, actually, I listened to it, which was really cool because um, it's you know people have like these. It's like like computer like implants and like like there's like this constant live stream and update. Mm -hmm. like, all this stuff so like the audiobook has like all this background noise in different parts of it like they kind of give you that that sensation of like that these people have when they've got this constant input of um, yeah. stuff coming to them which was really kind of cool um yeah but, that's a neat con like i like it when the audiobook has like uses that audio format to like, enhance the story. yeah 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 yeah, that I really appreciate that. I thought it was really interesting the yeah. way that they did that with the audio, like with the with the inputs, because like they're getting like constant advertisements and that's really cool. it was yeah. really cool. I like I liked that. Yeah. So what did you have next? I think I just went. Um, I I picked up a travel book, which <laughs> is ridiculous because none of us are traveling right now. But um, I just love is. Lonely Planets, America's National Trails, um, or National Trails of America, whatever. I get the words out of order, just like the patrons do when they request books. But I just love flipping through books like this and just seeing the pictures. It's like, yeah, I can't be there right now. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. And, like, with National Trails, well, you know, you're outside. You can maybe do some of that and see. Oh, yeah. I have always wanted to go, like... <clears throat> in the fall, take a driving driving vacation to see the, yeah. the changing colors and like I just I don't know, just looking flipping through these books, even especially like right now where I feel like we're trapped at home. It just it's really nice to see these beautiful wide open spaces. Mm -hmm. and just like don't you be there? Don't you like yeah. Yeah, my my brother lives in D.C. and he is truly trapped at home because he, both he and his family they have to work from home now. You know, he's he he. This is there's nowhere. There's nothing for him. And because in D.C., so much of the attraction of D.C. is is restaurants, museums, places that he also can't go to. They've been doing a lot of camping, and they go to. Um, there's a lot of really pretty national parks within you know a day's drive of D.C. and um. They've been sending pictures of vistas like that, and I know it's given them a lot of hope um, outside of their, you know, one bedroom. Apartment. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Like, we're gonna go just to see pretty outside areas. And Liz yeah. says, fun fact: um, Indiana is the only state that does not have a national park system national trail. Thanks for the phone. Yeah, facts. you also have to pay, to get into, and you have to pay to get into state parks in Indiana as well. Indiana. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Um, I have, uh, well, if we're talking about the outdoors, I don't actually, I don't actually have like a 100% hold on what this book is about, but it's called Migrations. Uh, the author is Charlotte McConaughey. Um, and I've seen it a lot of places and I read it on a list too of, um, on Book Riot. I don't know if anyone on here, um, uses the website. It's a great 
resource for just lots of books that are coming out, lots of articles about books, lots of like lists of books. It's, they have a book challenge, a reading challenge every year. I did it a couple of years ago where you have like these like 24 or 25 tasks. You got to read a book that fits each category. And the idea is to like really push you out of your reading zone and everything. And that was fun, challenging, but fun. Um, I have new authors that I read now, like that I look for because of that challenge. But anyway, they had a list of, um, of a, a list called climate horror. Um, and so think about like climate change and, you know, climate change affiliated like disasters and suspense and things like that. And this was one of the things that was on that list. And it's not, it's not horror. That's not really what this is, but, um, is it fiction? It is fiction. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they, she's basically going to find the last, follow the last migration of this set of birds because like their habitat is disappearing or so whatever reason this is like their final migration and then I think other stuff in her life comes up her dark history begins to unspool or whatever but it's definitely about climate change and and that's like the basis of it and so just this list on book riot was called like climate horror because it was just books where that is the suspense full factor okay. which is kind of neat so I would suggest anyone perusing that website because it's a great place to get ideas and just uh Things you probably haven't heard of. I know plenty of things there I haven't heard of, and I look at books all day. <laughs> <clears throat> I have a book here that is so not climate horror, and I picked it up solely because of the cover. It's a Debbie Maycomer book, and her books are always just so sweet and, you know, um, hopeful. But look at that picture. The cottage by the sea. Like, I love the romance novels that have, like, they put you in these quaint little towns, like, where, like, you know the, the neighbors, you know the person who runs this shop. And it just, it's one of those things. It just, I love the pretty cottage feel yeah. of these books. And, like, that's not my life. I don't live in a house with beautiful flowers on a cliff overlooking some beautiful bay. No, that's not my life. But wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Even like, for like a week or so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretend. Yeah. Pretend that's your life. Yeah. Right. We were talking about book covers, you and I, and then I was talking at work yeah. about book covers when I was looking around the tech services room and, um, and Deb pointed out, my coworker pointed out that um, if you want to look for some good book covers, the time to do it is at the very beginning of summer when all the beach reads come out. Um, that's your time to look for a book that has a, you know, like that. Because <laughs> at the beginning of summer, we get. Yes. I kind of like this where you're like up on the cliff away from the sand because sand is like, let's talk. It's annoying. It gets hot. It's hard to walk in. But yeah, in your face. the whole cottage core feel that yes <laughs> i think i'm feeling it like i'm loving those pictures that people post on yeah. instagram yeah i'm totally feeling okay. it right now you have a new hashtag to follow now it sounds like yes um this could not be more different but i did want to throw it in um this is a new well i don't know exactly a newish book um it's a graphic novel about kent state by Dirk brackdorf yeah. who wrote um my friend Dahmer, um, which is a pretty acclaimed graphic novel. And so this is a graphic uh, novel about the Kent State shootings. And so I just wanted to put that out there because he is, like I said, um, my, my friend Dahmer was pretty acclaimed. So this book will probably get some type of attention throughout the year, possibly award seasons for graphic novels and stuff like that. Um, and it's probably pretty good, but we literally just got it. So I haven't read it yet. Um, did you did you know anyone who was like at Kent State at that time? I worked at a library with a woman who was there when that happened, and it was oh wow! Yeah, so it was really interesting to hear, like from her, like yeah, how that was. Yeah, and, yeah, well, and it's kind of yeah. It was, it was kind of disappointing, I think, because there it was a big anniversary this year, but because of the pandemic, they didn't get to kind of, I don't want to use the word, they didn't, want, they didn't get to memorialize it. I want to use the word celebrate because that's certainly not the right word. They didn't get to do the things they were planning on doing around mm -hmm. the shootings because it was just like the deep part of the pandemic and they couldn't, you know, and so I, there would probably be a lot of, would have been a lot of good learning opportunities this spring and early summer for that, but everything got canceled. 
Um, but anyway, this, this book I bet is probably a, a good read. Cool. I think we are kind of oh, okay. out of time. Okay, well, I suppose <laughs> next week there's always more. <laughs> there's always more to read. There's always more to be interested in reading. Yes. And there's got to be someone out there somewhere who can get our adopted debtor program off the ground, right? I know. Just tell everybody you know. <laughs> and then uh, I don't even need to be in on like the back end finances of like when it becomes super popular and gets bought out and makes money or something. I just want to be one of the initial debtors who's adopted. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, so it's just like I guess what I'm saying is you don't even really have to credit us in any real way as long as we get to be debtors. <laughs> 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 oh. All right, well, we'll leave you with that. About? <laughs> I know, we'll leave you with that. Check out Rage Baking for the long holiday yeah. weekend, and uh, I hope everybody has a has a good weekend. I hope most of us have Monday off. That's a really nice. Yeah. a nice thing so take care and we will yep. see you uh next friday same, same time, time. Bye.